Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this Monday, April 11th, 2022 Decision Point show. My name is Aaron Swenlin from decisionpoint.com, and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin. How's everything going for you, Dad? Pretty good. Excellent. Well, we have a, a right up there up front that we're going to talk about uh, Carl's grab bag. So I know that always is interesting to see. Um, I did want to make a comment, though, before I move forward in this morning's trading room. Somebody w- was uh, asking about a, um, a way to profit, if you will, from the rise in yields. And uh, one of the other people in the room said, well, Carl talked about PFIX a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so we pulled up that chart and of course you looked brilliant. So <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I, if I recall, that was a grab bag item. So that's why I'm mentioning it right now. Then we're going to have you look at the market overview and uh, go through some of our primary indicators. I'm going to take over. I'm going to take a focus in on the energy sector and the materials sector. Uh, Some interesting things going on in those two sectors. And then I'll finish with my diamonds of the week, actually one from each of these sectors. So should be uh, interesting as we move forward. Before we get to any of that, I do want to let everybody know I was talking about our free trading room that we do on Mondays. Uh, I am there from noon to one Eastern. It is entirely free. All you need to do is sign up for the free newsletter. You'll get the link. Or if you just go to our homepage, and I think I have it right up here. If you just go to our homepage right here, you can just click to register for that trading room. I do send out the recordings so you don't have to worry about uh, missing out just because you can't go live. All right, enough of that marketing. Let's move forward. Here we have our sector scoreboard, and you can see kind of where we're at. Dad, I don't think there were any changes today. This was Friday's. No, it's, we almost got a change on XLI, but uh, it's it'll change tomorrow to a neutral. Okay, we'll see. Every uh, we we should keep an eye on that for tomorrow. Uh, we'll certainly write about it in the DP alert for our subscribers. Should we get that signal right now? Interestingly, we have one cell for the intermediate term trend model, and that is on consumer discretionary. A lot of people have asked me since we've moved to that cell, what is the difference between a neutral signal and a sell signal and truly a buy signal as well? The buy signal is very easy. When we get a silver cross, a 20 day EMA moving above the 50, that gives us a buy signal, no matter what, that's always a buy signal. When we get a dark cross, if it occurs above the 200 day, and that's a negative 20, 50 day EMA crossover, if that occurs above the 250 day EMA, it is a neutral. In the case of consumer discretionary, that particular dark cross came below the 200 day EMA. And so that's why we have a sell signal. But I thought I would go through that uh, before we get to your grab bag. But now it is time. What do you have for us today? Okay, let's look. All right. First of all, I wanted to look at a couple of stocks on our uh, that are in our EFT tracker list. Uh, this this is the PFIX that you mentioned, and uh, uh, this is a way to play rising interest rates. So that you can see that's just doing outstanding. <laughs> I'm wishing I'd bought. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things you got to get a feeling for it before you get too deep into it. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, UNG, I noticed... Uh, it was up big time today, and it's really on a tear, making a new 52-week highs today. Um, one of the grab items I had is uh, Home Builders ETF XHB, and uh, I wanted to make a point. You know, I've been talking about the weakness in the real estate market, 
Uh, I don't think we're seeing it in housing prices yet, but I, the 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 rising interest rates has really hit home builders at, for you know pretty obvious reasons. It's been in this year. It's well, yeah, this year is down thirty percent, and and uh, you can see it's almost <laughs> you know exactly. This is the thirty-year mortgage rate, and you can see that that's been up fifty-seven percent since the beginning of the year. So uh, that certainly tracks that uh, uh, higher interest rates are going to hurt the home builders. I have to mention before you move on that um, that somebody asked about XAB, uh, XHB in the trading room as well as to whether it was a good time to play this low. And my I would say definitely no. <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely we no. agreed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see I don't see much hope because, you know, as I, I see interest rates going higher from here. It doesn't mean they won't have a pullback, which would be a benefit for the home builders. And so there might be a chance to play that. And I would be looking for a bottom on the PMO as a potential entry point. One of the things that I've noticed, you know, there's, there's obviously right now there's a negative correlation between the mortgage rate, you know, 30 year mortgage rate and the home builders uh, ETF. But, you know, it's interesting that correlation, let me, let me just drag tr- this out about 10 years. And, uh, Correlation between these two indexes, it's still it it goes up and down. Sometimes they're positively correlated, and other times they're negatively correlated. So, uh, yes, uh, rising mortgage rates is going to be bad for the home builders, but obviously, it's not it's not uh, a constant. It, it varies. Okay, let's see. I wanted to look at the, mention the dynamic yield curve. We've got, uh, we've been started putting this in our uh, decision point alert uh, every day. And basically here's the inverted portion. You got the, the 20 year is higher interest rate than the 30 year. And then you see there's a, the seven is is higher than the ten year. This should go right to left higher, but uh, obviously that's we're running the problems. And when you talk about this, uh, this is a this is a condition issue. This is a condition in the market. This is a bad thing. It it is it is warning that we will probably go into a recession. That doesn't but it doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. So you just have to keep this in mind that, okay, we're getting inverted interest rates. We could be entering a recession at any time, but it could come way out there. I personally feel like it's going to come uh, sooner than later. Now I had, yes. Okay, here's our gold and silver cross index summary. Can you move that to the center of the screen? I can. There we go. Okay. Now, this is something we publish every week and uh, on Fridays and uh, gives us an idea. This sort here shows major, the major market indexes in one group and uh, the, the 11 S&P 500 sectors uh, in another group to kind of give you, you know, apples and apples, et cetera. Um, These um, here are just oddball sectors that uh, we also track, but they don't fit in in one group or the other, actually. Uh, Now, I've come up with a a new sort for this, and that's uh, sorting by silver cross index value. And this gives us a much better picture of of the rankings. I mean, it is ranked and you can see 
ones are doing particularly badly and ones that are doing really well. So if you're looking at getting involved in one of these ETFs, uh, this is where you would be looking. So I'm going to start adding, I haven't talked to you, Aaron, about this, <laughs> but I, I'm going to start adding this uh, in the uh, weekly. Uh, Absolutely. I think uh, that's an excellent uh, yeah. visual, especially for numbers and spreadsheet people like us. Right. Okay. Now I probably ought to get down to the regular business here. <laughs> okay. This, this rally that we've had is, I still believe it is a bull, uh, I'm sorry, bear market rally. And if you look back at other bear market starts, you, you'll see similar, uh, not every time, but you'll see similar action where you have a declining tops line uh, out of, you know, for a pretty good decline. And then we'll get a nice uh, enthusiastic rally and it breaks it breaks above support levels um, and the resistance levels and the, the declining tops lines, et cetera. And, and people get all excited. And now I think we're seeing the end of that rally. We, well, it, it has ended at, at this point. And I think we're going to continue to go down and, and test the lows. Looking at the one year chart again, there, you see this uh, declining, um, declining wedge. Um, it looks like it tested the bottom of that today and also this level of support. Now, the declining wedge most likely will, will resolve on the upside. It doesn't mean that it's going to change the, the, whole, the entire trend, uh, but um, we, we should be looking for something like that. But I wouldn't bet on it till we see some movement in that uh, direction. I want to look at new highs and new lows okay today um the the new highs contracted as you would expect on this kind of a day it never really did have any upside today the performance of cap weighted versus equal weighted you know they're really kind of uh running together now um you normally expect on rallies, you expect the beginning of a rally, you expect the uh, unequal weighted indexes to do better than the cap weighted, but that's it's totally opposite now. It's been acting uh, in, uh, opposite uh, the way we normally expect. Let's see the climax assessment today we've got. Uh, don't this is marginal it's not it didn't really reach the arbitrary level that I've selected as a climax level it's kind of close but there's nothing else uh, in, in there uh, anywhere close to that uh, we have um, the SPX total volume is uh, equal to the one year daily average short-term indicators uh, not too oversold, uh, but actually they're equal to where we had uh, this oversold condition and, and ended up in a rally. But I, again, I'm not expecting a, a full-fledged rally like we've got here. The ITBM and ITVM uh, charts behaving as we would expect. We I was looking, I was waiting here for a top right in this area, right close to the zero line, but it went ahead and uh, got into the normal oversold area, uh, both of them, and uh, then we topped. So we, we've got, in, in the intermediate term, we've got a lot longer to go down before we get it to an oversold level. Let's see, and the, here they are together possible a possible bounce out of this in the short term but the intermediate term is saying that we should be going lower bitcoin is is looking 
terrible. And uh, we, we had uh, a cup with handle here. Uh, I think this has gotten too low to be considered a handle anymore. I think we've just got to break down and we can ignore this, but we'll see if there's any, see how it goes <clears throat> later this week. Let me get something easy to find here. <laughs> The 10-year yield, again, heading up to uh, towards three, it's, it'll, it's almost 2.8 now. And uh, this is a very steep rising trend. You can see here we had that and it corrected out of that. We set an, a less accelerated line, but this is really still too steep, but uh, I mean, we should look for it to slow down and set a, a less accelerated line, but uh, it's certainly on a tear right now. Uh, T-bonds, again, breaking down out of a, a falling, falling wedge formation. That's not what we expect normally, so that's especially bearish. Oil. I'm sorry, I've got something in my way here. I'm going to move. Um, oil is uh, not doing well. Um, this is kind of a continuation pattern. So we were expected to, to go higher out of this. We've got a support line right here. And uh, so um, I don't see any way that it's going to go up. But they said, um, gosh, what was it today that it was it was headed down because uh, well I forget but some <laughs> inane reason anyway but I I don't see any way and unless something major happens uh, in our production that it's going to not go higher. Oh, and gold, gold uh, is in this trading range right now. We had this little excursion up here, but right now it's, it's consolidating. And uh, um, I, <laughs> I, I expect usually things won't work the way you hope that they would. <laughs> the, the rising trend line, well, maybe that'll hold, maybe it won't, but gold is always a disappointment. But with the Bitcoin being such a disappointment, maybe people will wake up to the fact that there is actual uh, uh, value in an ounce of gold. Right, right. Okay. All right. right. You left me about 10 minutes. I think I have plenty of time here. Okay, good. Everybody wants to hear you. They get to hear from me all the time. <laughs> all right. So I was um, going to be looking at a focus on that energy space and on materials, mainly because I'm going to give you two uh, diamonds of the week, one from energy and one from the material sector. So, uh, and both of them came up on one of, uh, on my diamond PMO scan is what I call it. Uh, so I'm going to sh share with you what I saw there, but let's look at the energy sector here because obviously large pullback today. How did it damage indicators? Well, you know, the RSI is still positive. We did see the PMO yanked downward, giving us a top below the signal line. I don't like those. Usually that's a really bad sign. Uh, however, when you look under the hood, you know, we still have amazing participation going on in the energy sector. Now, granted, these three are not updated with today's numbers. But what I would expect, because these numbers have been at 100% for so long, that we probably will see, like we did back here, some short-term damage on price above the 20. But I don't think we're going to see much um, hurt down here with price above the 50 and 200. Now, of course, if the PMO is correct here and we're going to see even lower prices, um, you know, certainly all bets are off there. But at this point, there is a lot of internal strength within the energy sector. Stochastics have tipped over a little bit, but you know what? On a 3% decline, I would have expected uh, more. Uh, this 
indicator is very sensitive. And the fact that it didn't just fall out of bed, I think is still positive. You'll also note that, of course, the energy sector has continued to outperform. It outperformed well last week. We'll see if that outperformance continues this week. But I still like the look. We have a flat top, rising bottoms. That's an ascending triangle. The expectation is a breakout to the upside. Certainly, energy is in a bull market configuration. So I think it's uh, not out of the realm of possibility to get a bullish pattern to execute as we usually expect. Now, I'm going to look at the materials sector. We'll kind of get a little bit more information there. And again, I apologize, our participation numbers don't come in until after taping of the show, but I think um, we're going to get enough information off of this one. So we have what looked like a flag forming. It could still be the case. 20-day EMA is still holding. RSI is still positive. We certainly did not leave lose 3% as we did in the XLE in XLE. We have a PMO that was topping and is now flattening. We have a silver cross index that is rising. Don't like to see that on the golden cross. That tells us there's not long-term support that we wanna see. Um, but we're still looking at some decent participation. I'm not really excited about going fishing in this sector, but there are certain industry groups that I'm liking. And one of them, I will be sharing the stock with you. So let's go ahead and look. Um, for those of you who are peeking at the top here, you know that my first diamond of the week is going to be Hess Midstream. This is a pipeline and Granted, you know, these don't always work out. Just saying um, I'm not a registered investment advisor. You know, all trading decisions are your own, all of that. But I can show you the technicals. Hess had a really bad day again, over down over one and a half percent. But we really didn't see any real damage to the indicators. We did see this kind of failure at this area of overhead resistance. This is what we're waiting for is the breakout here, because that would confirm a bullish double bottom. Again, it's a bullish pattern. Clearly, Hess is in a, a bull market. So we would expect to see that actually come to fruition. That minimum upside target would bring us pretty much to the highest price that we saw um, back here in March. So makes sense. We get the breakout and at least get a move up here to that $34 range. But really, when I look at these indicators, like I said, RSI damaged, but still positive. PMO still rising. Stochastics moved above 80 today, despite a decline. So I think that this one's looking pretty good. You can see that relative strength is rising here and you've got relative strength. That's relative strength of the group. And then relative strength of Hess against the S&P is also showing some outperformance that started last week. And last week it began to outperform an industry group that is already outperforming. So that is the kind of information we want to see. That's what I like to find on my diamonds. Check uh, the, the yield. Rough. Check the yield. And the yield. There you go. 6.31%. So that's not a, a bad uh, hedge with inflation as well on buying a stock. It is an LP. So you will end up with a, a K1, I believe, that you do have to file when you get into um, one of these limited partnerships, as they're called. Um, I don't find it to be a big deal. My broker fills out all the forms. I just throw it in um, into my accountant and we're, we're good but I thought I would mention that. All right, our last one is going to be Mosaic. So I was saying that we're in the materials sector. Materials is looking a little bit weak there under the surface, but if we go through and we start looking at industry groups, and I'm gonna just draw your attention down here, this industry group, specialty chemicals, has been outperforming the market for quite some time. Mosaic, which we're looking at now, has been outperforming the market since February, and it has been outperforming its industry group since January. So this is a leader within specialty chemicals, and that is uh, 
starting, well, not just starting, it's been outperforming this buy for quite some time. But let's go back up here and look at price and the RSI. So RSI is overbought, not liking that. Um, but if you look back here, and I'm going to use the inspect tool, we can see how long the RSI was mostly overbought. So I've got the inspect tool up. I click and hold, drag to the side. Well, I dragged the wrong direction. Drag to the side, and this is going to tell me how many periods, 21 periods, meaning for about 20 days, Mosaic was overbought and it didn't really damage it that much. So I'm not particularly worried about the RSI being overbought. It's mildly overbought at best. We have a nice breakout above overhead resistance. We have a PMO that is turned up. It is on the overbought side, but when you're looking at a stock, a winner that is keeping that is continuing to win, that's what you're going to see. So we have that PMO buy signal that is coming in has not arrived yet. We have stochastics moving above 80. Typically when stochastics oscillate above 80 in particular or above 50, you're going to have internal strength. So even when you get these pullbacks, you're usually going to see a move upward when your stochastics are oscillating in this area. We want to particularly have them oscillating above 80 because when that happens, there's usually a lot of strength. So if we come back here from that low and go to when we got to this high, when stochastics topped, that was an, a 26% gain. So um, not to say that we're, we're going to get a 26% gain here. I'm just making the point that that's why you want to see stochastics oscillating above 80. All right. That brings us pretty much to the end of the show. Um, were there any points you wanted to wrap up? I, I am trying to think. I don't think you looked at the dollar. I think we ended up passing that up. So I guess I'll put that up there. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So the dollar is, has broken out from kind of this flag formation. It's a little bit of an unruly flag because the flag itself is so long, but it's still a continuation pattern. We did get the breakout. It's pretty much been on an upside run um, since I got back from Europe, of course, when I had to cash in at the low here. <laughs> so, but it has been running hot. And despite that, gold is still rallying. I mean, it's certainly, you, you saw the chart earlier. We can look at it just really quick right now, but you know, gold is still managing to rise. So they're decoupling a bit here and that's good usually for gold. The dollar longer term chart here, the one year chart, we can see it's in a very nice rising trend channel. The issue of course, is it's tapping the top of it and typically in a rising trend channel, when it taps the top, it starts to uh, ease itself back down, not necessarily to the low, but certainly we usually are going to see a bit of a pullback. But everything here, as far as the indicators, look very positive for UUP. And that's all we have for today. So we're going to wish you good luck and good trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.